Craig here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I go about compressing the images that I insert into my blog posts. Now I'm going to show you how I do this and then I'm going to show you a couple of tests that I've run to show you the difference and why you should be compressing your images. So last week I published this blog post that explains how to downgrade WordPress and because it's a tutorial I've included several large images. Now, had I not compressed these images, the load time of this web page would be much bigger because it's got to download all of these images. So that is exactly why you should consider compressing any images that you embed or insert into your blog posts or pages. So generally what I'll do is I will record my tutorial video first, then after it's rendered, I will play it and then I'll pause it at certain points where I want to capture a screenshot. Now the tools I like to use is the snipping tool. Uh, I believe that's with most window installations. And then I use, also use Monosnap. If you don't know what Monosnap is, I highly recommend it. If you're inside Wealthy Affiliate, uh, just search Monosnap and you'll see a video tutorial I created. But this allows me to highlight or select whatever. And then I can, you know, put arrows explaining, you know, make sure you click on this button here, etc. As I'm going to be embedding the image into my post, generally what I'll do is I'll save the image to my computer. Now, the only problem here is the image doesn't get compressed, so the file size is pretty large. Now, there's nothing wrong with that if you're keeping the image on your computer, but if you want to have it online and give a good user experience, it's important that you compress them. So here's the file size of the images from that blog post prior to being compressed. And here is the image size after they've been compressed. So there's a huge difference. And the website that I use to do this is called tinypng.com. Now don't worry because you can drag uh, JPEG files in here too. Now there are several websites that do the same type of thing. I much prefer this one for a couple of reasons. One, you can use PNG or JPEG. And two, I can drag several images at once, into, well, up to 20 images at once. Okay, so this is basically how it works. I capture my images, I drag them over, it starts compressing straight away, and this image is 185 kilobytes. It's compressed it by 75%. Uh, this one's only 58. So you can see how much it's compressed it by. The total is 73%. 733 kilobytes, that's almost three quarters of a megabyte, it's reduced the file size of these seven images. So my next step would be, I would just click on each one of these, download the images to my hard drive, ready to embed into my WordPress post. So what I've done for this video is I've created a test WordPress website, and I've created two pages. One contains the default images that have not been compressed, and the other one contains the compressed images. Now the images are in a slightly different order because I re-downloaded them and uploaded them. But it contains the same amount of images, just a different compression. So the testing tool that I'm using is uh, Google's own page speed testing tool. If you want to find it, just search Google page speed test and it's probably going to be one of the top two results. So I pre-done these tests and the mobile score for the uncompressed images is 48 and the desktop is 82. For the uh, compressed images, we have 67 for mobile and 91 for the desktop. So should you take notice of this testing tool? Well, it's Google's own testing tool. And I always say if you want to rank with Google, you should probably do as they say, etc. Because this tool, they've designed this because they want your website to perform how they believe a website should be performing. So it's telling us right here, what should I fix? Well, you should optimize your images. So compressing the file size of your images is basically optimizing them. The same goes for mobile. Now there are other things, and I don't want to get into that into in this video, but optimizing your images is is a key thing, especially for the load time. So you'll notice that we have no optimized images for the desktop score. That's because they are optimized perfectly for a desktop user. However, if we click on mobile, 
you'll see that it still says optimize images and show how to fix. Well, it doesn't really tell us exactly what to do to fix it, but it will tell us, you know, this image can still be reduced by 87%. Keep in mind, this has already been reduced by 73%, but this is saying 87% of this 57 kilobytes. So there's still more compression available for a mobile device. Now, I believe it's telling me this because if my website was designed for a mobile user, then I wouldn't be inserting images that are 760 pixels wide because I believe that's approximately how wide the images are. I would insert images that are only 300 50 pixels wide maximum. This doesn't matter on my website because it's responsive and the images respond to the size of your browser. But that is likely why we still see the optimized image um, error. Well, it's not an error, recommendation. Now, before I end this video, I do want to jump back and show you something else I was playing around with. So today I installed two plugins, uh, one the W3 Total Cache, a cache plugin. I highly recommend you, you install some type of cache plugin, but with caution, if you don't know what you're doing, maybe you know, look into it and research how to do this. And the other plugin, which I've never seen before, was called Speed Booster Pack. Now the reason I installed this is because it was telling me it's going to put a whole bunch of my scripts in the footer area instead of the header area. So I installed these two plugins, I changed a bunch of settings in here which I'm not going to get into and then I performed the tests again. So here are the results after I installed those two plugins. Mobile jumped up to 95 and desktop to 91. Now go ahead and test your own website and these results are pretty impressive. Granted, there's no, there's not much content. There's only uh, seven images on the web page that's been tested. So I decided to go to GT Metrics, and we got 99 and 95. Now, if you've ever been here, that's pretty impressive. Again, then tools.pingdom.com, uh, 92. I guess that's not, uh, that's not uh, that abnormal. 92 for the grade. But anyway, that was from installing two plugins that were called uh, the Cache Plugin, W3TC, and Speed Booster Pack. So that's it, that wraps up this video. Uh, again, I highly recommend you compress and optimize your images. Uh, there are several different tools out there, you know, play around with them. I personally like this one for several reasons, like I've already explained. And the other reason maybe I didn't cover is you don't lose any quality in the image when you use this tool. Now there are other tools that will compress your image even more, but once you go past a certain percent, around 70%, you start to lose uh, quality in the pixels, etc. Questions, comments, post them below and have yourself a great productive day.